What's going on, guys? It's Shed. We're here on the Warzone Pacific, and they finally uh, ended up putting out this solo mode. Now, they ended up releasing it yesterday, but I didn't make a video on it because I was showing everybody that I got the Diamond PTRS or whatever. Last night, I also ended up unlocking the uh, Diamond Cooper Carbine. I say Diamond because it's a part of the AR classes, obviously, but I wasn't entirely sure if... I needed to actually do the Cooper Carbine since the STG is broken. I was afraid that I would go through all of that since I couldn't do anything with the STG. I was afraid that if I went through the Cooper Carbine that it wouldn't really count as anything, but it turns out that it does actually count uh, towards that diamond camo. So now technically I don't need to do the STG in order to unlock uh, atomic camo. Real quick, I want to thank the people that subscribed recently due to Caldera and all the hype and stuff around it and whatever, even though like the feedback is like, you know, mixed, obviously people are still taking a look at it. So I appreciate you guys for showing up here and staying. I hope they put me into an easy match for this game, please. Shit, I don't have a high alert class. I think high alert is actually a pretty decent thing to use at this point in time for a class currently i'm running like a type 100 setup with like a car 98 i, I don't have anything perfect that's for sure my god it's beautiful to land up here and try to get this top seeker contract uh yeah well uh, about peak uh that didn't work out so oh okay We're just gonna crash. Okay, what did I do wrong? This shit just straight up closed. I didn't even get a dev error. It just closed. I jumped out of the chopper too early and I didn't make it. So uh... I know that if I landed in that lower part of the peak area, anyone that landed on the top of the bunker kind of thing are just gonna look down and shoot me like fish in a barrel. So I was like, that's probably a bad idea to just land there. So I was gonna fly past it and just land somewhere else. But the game had other plans for me, I guess. I tried to shave my neck and to be honest, I think I fucked up. I'm not even gonna show it, I, but I tried. So a little bit more time has passed and people have had a little bit more time with, uh, you know, Caldera in general. There have been more people out there that have like kind of figured out like a little bit more of the flow of the game and things like that on top of like solos and stuff, but also people have tried the normal battle royale mode now and they feel like the game plays a lot better outside of just the like Vanguard mode. But the Vanguard mode is the only way you can play solos at the moment, which I, I don't necessarily mind it. But the biggest thing that most people are complaining about are the uh, loadouts. Not the play Planes, not none of that shit the loadouts the fact that you have to wait in order to get your loadout is just nightmare it's not cool i didn't get all my attachments on my weapons either all right let's try to land that peak again started with 135 people which is strange there's 60 people currently i like i fall so much faster for some reason <laughs> oh, that's the only weapon i have realistically i could have just shot the fuel thing instead but i was like eh. I missed. I deserve it. Thanks for shooting my body, McLovin. I really... I deserved it, I guess, man. Wait, why does he already have a confirmed scavenger thing? Oh, he spawned out of there with a scavenger already? Is that how it's supposed to work? I don't know any of the rule sets or anything. I'm just trying. I know that the PPSH is considered pretty strong. I think they're actually already going to nerf it. So I'm assuming everybody's just going to be running around with the PP. Oh yeah, tomorrow we got a banger UFC card. I know all the people that have no idea what the fuck, anything about MMA, whatever. They're like, here we go. But listen, early prelims, there's one, two, three, four, five fights on there. Four fights on the regular prelims. Nine fights already. 14 total fights on this card, which is decently sized. Andy Costa is on the early prelims. Random Maverick. Ryan Hall. I love all these fighters, actually. Oh, wait. So we can't go to peak here. Where should we land? Should we try village and then just maybe, like take a vehicle or something. I'm gonna try to land up here, actually. I really don't like the idea of landing outside of the map because as everybody has been complaining about, the hills are ridiculous. I have a feeling people are landing here. Why do I feel like I hear footsteps? The explosions overhead literally sound like footsteps. People were telling me that these vehicles do not feel good. And for as loud as they sound, they have absolutely no horsepower. Can I buy a UAV yet? There's a couple guys fighting over here. Can I just buy a UAV? Okay, I can. Okay, where can we go? Uh, we can drive down towards village in this truck. On my way! Why is it so hard to drive cars in this map? Holy shit. Help the vehicles. Give them a little bit of juice. All right, gonna 
gonna drive up here. I don't know how many more people are left around here, but I killed a few people. Better than I thought it would go. Oh my god, how do we drive around this shit? Dude, oh my, come on. Alright, let's go to our loadout. Grab it right quick. If I could drive up there, I would, but... People were saying that you drive much faster when you're actually, like, on the road in comparison to other shit, but... Let's go over here and buy a UAV. This card is actually super stacked. I mean, I don't even know who's gonna win this matchup with Oliveira, and... I, I don't even know. I mean, okay, man. You can hide the whole time. You're not gonna win any games that way, so do whatever you want, man. He just wants to survive. Like, that. that's the best thing he's got going just wants to live. I'm gonna fuck with his psyche a bit. He thinks I just gave up on him, don't want to bother with it. So I'm on my way back. <sighs> the fuck did I die at? I'm laying it back down there, I don't give a fuck. Coming back, I don't care. I'm coming right back. He ran away when he wanted to go and try to fight and then play this like angle game where he's just LOSing, no challenging, firing back at me, nothing, because he knows he can't. All right, nope, don't care, flying all the way back. They need to do something about these explosions overhead. I keep thinking I'm hearing like thumping from footsteps and shit and it's just not, that's not what's happening. Somebody else picks me up, but whatever, man. Fuck! So frustrating, and I downed him, and now he's gonna run over there and get killed by him. Conrad is so dog shit. I bailed out so hard. Thank you for smoking this trash can. Miranda Maverick has gotten robbed in her last fight. I can almost guarantee that. Ryan Hall, unlucky. I think he got a leg injury and then knocked out by Taporia. A lot of people thought that he was just trying to, like, fight like a dumbass. But the reality of it is, like, no, he literally got injured. And he could only do so many moves. Prelims, Jordan Wright and Bruno Silva. Somebody's gonna get hurt. Yeah, I can just tell. Tai Tuivasa versus Augusto Sakai. Tai Tuivasa, I feel like... Yeah. These guys are just gonna swing. Heavyweights. And then we got Bantamweight Pedro Munoz versus Dominic Cruz. Would be a big win for Pedro if he ends up winning, but it would also be really nice to see Dominic Cruz win. One of, if not the most unique style ever in MMA. It's very, very recognizable. If you saw like a silhouette of the way that certain fighters fought, you would be able to immediately recognize Dominic Cruz. Al's just takes out Prince Ant, just thinking that he's playing Verdansk. Doesn't have his heartbeat sensor, so he basically has lost his senses of anything. I think he's now starting to actually realize that he didn't do anything with his own senses. He just used the heartbeat sensor. It's a tough realization when you realize how dependent you've become on a certain piece of equipment. And I would not be surprised if people quit just for that. Josh Emmett versus Dan 50k Ige. These guys are going to put a potential fight of the night type shit. Uh, Paiva versus versus Sean O'Malley. Paiva's legit. Like, I, I don't know how well he matches up into somebody like O'Malley, but Paiva, I've seen him in, like, a, a war before. Like, he has good fights, so. Ty Cara France, I, I don't know much about him, admittedly. I didn't watch too many of his fights, or maybe I have, but I just don't really remember him very much. Against Cody Garbrandt, who's actually making his flyweight debut, and he is favorited. I'm hoping that the same thing doesn't happen to Cody Garbrandt the same way it happened to, uh, Frankie Edgar. Frankie Edgar, when he was the 155 pound champion back when I was in like high school, like, he was known to have like really good game planning, really well rounded, but he was very, very fast. But the thing is, he was a little bit too small for the weight class. So a lot of people felt like, oh, well, if he does lose at 155, which he did inevitably, if he moves down to 145 instead, it would be a better weight class for him. But it turns out that that speed advantage that he had at 155 ended up diminishing because he's now fighting people that are a little bit faster. They're a little bit closer to him. So Cody Garbrandt is also another one of those guys where they're talking about this feeling like his natural weight class. And he also has a speed advantage over most people he fights. Is he actually going to be faster than people at flyweight now? That's the question. Because if he's not, I don't know how much more he has. Oh, aim it in. That guy, Zach, you okay. took way too long, buddy. Jeff, hands of steel, Neil versus Santiago Ponza Nibio. I love Jeff Neil. I think that dude is a killer. He, I love every single fight that that guy is in, and he just bangs, period. I don't give a fuck. Ponza Nibio's legit, too, but I, I think he recently got 
knocked out pretty badly, right? He's legit, though. I mean, I think he only has, like, one or two losses or something. Amanda Nunes, the GOAT, versus Juliana Pena. I mean, she's basically the only one left that she hasn't beaten. Dows ends up going down. Getting a self-revive. Don't know how far away he got shot. There's these, like, random cluster strikes that are randomly hitting the ground now. He got beamed, but he doesn't know exactly where from. He still has dead silence. I don't think Juliana really stands a chance, but there is that small part of me in any kind of fight where a person is a mess. Oh, ends up getting pressed. Dow's taking shots, ends up popping them. That was just a very sloppy gunfight on both ends there. I mean, to be fair, I don't think he expected him to jump up and 50-50 grind the couch or anything from Smitty, but I think Amanda Nunez by absolute murder. Um... Oh, ends up beaming him. Getting down. No, no, no. Do not call that there. He's now calling it smart, smart, smart. Now, the thing is, the guy's going to have enough time to be able to up and run away immediately. Yeah, he got away. He actually managed to get out, so... If I were that guy, I probably would have backed up completely, or I would try to cut him off. He's going right towards his loadout, though, so it's top six. Only five kills. I haven't seen people drop very many high kills in this uh, map yet. The highest I've seen was, like, 20... 20 something solos anyway i don't even think it was high 20s yet surely you know maybe after a few days or whatever people can start breaking 20s 30s or whatever it's all about just finding the flow of the map everybody's being incredibly like ultra critical and all that shit there's definitely it's, it's got its problems for sure you also have to know just the design thought process the map design itself is not like Verdansk. Verdansk had a lot of spaces you can sit in, a lot of like, this map, Caldera, does make you feel pretty exposed the majority of the time. You can still camp, you can still hide, but people not having their heartbeat sensors, things like that, and just the general design of the map, people do play a bit differently. People just gotta adjust. I think overall, the map itself, I do like the design more than Verdansk. Design, you can go back to some of my earliest videos on Warzone and me complaining about the rocks and the verticality and stuff like that. Obviously, there's a shit ton of rocks and verticality on this map as well, but it's it's not it's the way that the points of interest flow into each other that kind of separates them i don't like the idea of having to run uphill all the time obviously it's just then we got char oh top five smitty taking shots at him got the stg ends up downing him good shot very very little recoil on this thing despite having that wire stock on there as well which actually i think hurts your recoil control carlos Oliveira, dustin poirier i mean that's gonna be such a hard fight to call I, I don't really know dustin is minus 150 charles is plus 130 charles wins this there's probably gonna be like discussion around him talking about like oh he never fought khabib and blah 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 i don't really know what's gonna go on there i doubt khabib would come back but if he wins that then i assume gaethje's next if dustin wins i assume i thought he said something about 170 i don't really know how that's gonna go for him i don't think he's like his frame i don't think it's that great for 170 I'm getting shot guy's sitting up on the hill directly above him and there's someone directly behind you behind you Did he down the other guy? Like, up on the hill or something? He might have. No, no, he didn't. He took a shot at him. And the firing back. 1v1 situation. Final circle. The guy has the high ground, but if Smitty just keeps paying attention. Ends up breaking armor. Cracks the armor. Wants to go and press him. He ended up firing back, and it slowed him down a little bit. That was actually good return fire right there, because he absolutely would have been on his ass otherwise. Oh, you got to start rotating, though. You got to start rotating. He's going to be... Oh, this is bad. Man, this thing doesn't move at all. Holy shit. He did like a weapon pass last night, but to be honest, I thought it was going to be a lot bigger of a patch. Takes a shot. Good shot. Smitty ends up knocking him down. He's going to try to climb up there and challenge him. He shouldn't be able to go and win this gunfight. He ends up hopping up. Jumps down, shoots him in the back, breaks the arm. He almost lost that shit. I would have been so disheartened if he had actually lost that gunfight. Holy shit, what happened? I'm wondering if they're gonna ever add like the regular BR with every weapon in it solos. I wonder how that's gonna play any differently. I I'm trying to determine whether or not I like this one or the older way more. I love the fact there's no heartbeat sensor. I love that shit. I don't like the loadout change. I think it's complete shit. I'm gonna pick O'Malley. I'm gonna pick uh, Garbrandt, Jeff Neal, Amanda Nunez, and... Ooh. The top one is the hardest one to pick for me. The main fight, Charles Oliveira versus Dustin Poirier, is the hardest one to pick for me. I know that Dustin's favorited. I've seen Dustin overcome a lot more than I've seen Charles Oliveira overcome. But Oliveira's finishing rate with his well-roundedness and in his champion form, he might be more dangerous than Poirier. 
But Poirier is more consistent. I can see Charles Oliveira finishing him. He could potentially hurt him on the feet and submit him. I can also see Dustin just putting the pressure on Charles and Charles kind of wilting. The dig that most people have against Charles Oliveira is that they've seen him, quote, quit and not have heart and things like that. But at what point in time did you see him quit? Because it's been years since you've ever seen him do that. Obviously, every fighter looks good when every fight's going their way. But Charles literally got hurt, knocked down by uh, Chandler in a very recent fight. And came back and knocked him out back. So that, to me, that just screams heart. He does have heart. Does he have the cardio to deal with Dustin's pressure and cumulative damage, though? That's going to be the same question. If Charles does somehow win this, it's going to be the same question when he goes and fights Justin Gaethje. I'm picking Dustin on this one. I think the diamond is just too consistent. It's too resilient. Solos? I'm going to keep grinding the solos out and shit like that. I don't know how many I'm going to play in a day, how fun it's going to be, whatever. But I'm happy that there's something new going on in Warzone, you know, to kind of change the flow of everything. And uh, right now, uh, everything in multiplayer that I can do over on uh, Vanguard is completely finished. So I can do some bad class setups. But to be honest, at this point, no one has even found the quote best class setups yet. So it'll take time.